Report of atrocities and attacks in some local government areas in Plateau State, Nigeria, in 2022. On the 4th of January 2022, armed Fulani attacked and shot dead one person in Irigwe Chiefdom in Basa local government area and further invaded the same village with highly sophisticated weapons on the 7th, 10th, and 12th January 2022, leaving 18 people dead. There was no arrest or effort made towards fishing out the, per the perpetrators. The information gotten from a reliable source before then about planned attack in the community helped to alert the relevant authorities immediately, including the security agents stationed in the village, which led to a reinforcement of security agents, making a total of 30 personnel to safeguard the village against the planned attack but couldn't stop the onslaught that claimed 18 lives and seven persons sustained various degree of injuries. While 107 houses were raised down, however, during the attack, all the security agents were gathered in one place, except one of them that was up to his responsibility. And that act by the security left the community in a dilemma of suspecting them of being part of the attack. In Riyom local government area, there was a similar experience on Monday, 10th January 2022, at about 9 p.m. in Tiana village of Tahu's community, where gunmen suspected to be full of militias ambushed and killed three persons on their way from Riyom town. On 31st January 2022, Two natives of Weren community of Riyom local government area, Plateau State, were ambushed by armed men suspected to be Fulani militias on their way from Ferry Lamba. As a result, Mr. Ayuba Dapwe was shot dead, while one Mr. Dasholom Davo sustained gunshot on his head and was rushed to the hospital. Eight commuters and two others on a motorbike along Guarim Bangai Road of Bachi District, Riyom local government area, on 8 March 2022, were ambushed by armed men suspected to be Fulani militias on their way from Host Market, where they had already blocked the road with big logs of wood at Guarim Village. At about 7.02 p.m., and the armed militia didn't use firearms, but stick and sword to carry out the attack. Mr. Danju Majok and Mr. Samuel Bulus Bwede sustained several injuries as a result of the ambush, and one motorbike was scattered away. On the April 6, 2022, at about 3.30 p.m., Ranti's village of Gashish district Barak in Ladi, local government area. Internally displaced persons were attacked. Two persons were killed while three people sustained fatal injuries. On April 11, 2022, 78 people were gruesomely murdered and others sustained various degree of injuries in an attack by government suspected to be Fulani headsmen at about 10 villages of Kanam local government area where properties worth several millions of Naira were also destroyed. On the night of 4th June 2022, at about 8.34 p.m., armed men suspected to be Fulani militias attacked Shaha village of Weng district in Joe South local government area. As a result, one person by name, Stephen Giang, 24-year-old, was shot dead why Mr. Isaac Giang and Reverend Davo Ishaya John sustained severe injuries and were taken to the hospital. On the 80th July 2022, at about 8.04 p.m., government suspected to be Fulani militias ambushed and shot dead one person, namely Mr. Amos Pam, 32 years of age, at Quay Community of Riam local government area. On the 21st July 2022, total of five persons were gruesomely murdered by government suspected to be Fulani militias at Fusa community in Fabu district of just east local government area. 
on 31st July 2022 at about 8 p.m. Shugui community in Vueng district of Jo South local government area were attacked by armed militia suspected to be Fulani Hesmen. As a result, seven people were killed, three children and four adults. And the perpetrators were spotted to have fled to Guanawiri district axis of Riyom local government I area. The, the, the point is that uh, the attack is rotational from local government to local, to local government. The Ganawuri where you are just talking about is one of the greatest places that uh, the Fulani has built a very big uh, and massive, you know, you know, community within a uh, plateau and southern Kaduna. Ganawuri is uh, on your way. If you are coming from Jos and then you are going to Kaduna before you get to Manchok, it's a big community there where the Muslims have, uh, you know, it's a hideout community. For the Muslim, it is from that Ghana worry that they went to attack and displace the the attacker people who are in a in a in in plateau state. So so much is happening. So you watch from January to June, it continued. They they face one a local government for a while, one community. After a while, they move, they turn the attention to another local government. Yes, and continue. That is the continue. that is what we are noticing now. Armed men suspected to be Fulani militia shot dead one Mrs. One Mrs. Leop Daliop of Bangai village in Bauchi district's Riyom local government area on 27th August 2022 after she returned from sweeping cooking church, Bangai. On 7th September 2022, government suspected to be Fulani militia attacked a mining site at Ruku village of Gashish district, Berkin Ladi local government area. So you see, from, from, from Riyom local government, they to moved Berkin to Berkin Ladi local government. Yes. That is, which month is that? September. September. So let's continue. You now see from September, let's go on, you see how they have been moving. Eh? At about 10.45 p.m., as a result, three women sustained various degrees of injuries. Shortly after, shortly after security agents were alerted about the attack, personnel of Operation Safe Heaven from Tanti swung into action. The time is actually, called, is actually called Tenti. Tenti. Tenti, yes. I've been to there, you know, when we went to Gashi local government to go and take stocks of uh, the le level of devastation that have been done in those locations after 22 communities were sacked at the point they swung into action and curtailed further casualty and also rushed the victims to barrack in Ladi general hospital similarly on the night of september 11 2022 at about 10 pm gunmen invaded the church premises of cooking rcc ghana ghana district riyom local government area one person was shot dead, Mrs. James Nyang, and the RCC chairman, Reverend Bong Fong Dong, was kidnapped. Where the kidnappers contacted the family members through a phone call, demanding for a ransom of 20 million naira, but was later released on Tuesday, 13th September 2022, on a ransom of 1.5 million naira. A 60 years old woman, namely Mrs. Laraba Dauda of Mary Village, Rahos community of Riyom local government area, was slaughtered by a group of people suspected to be Fulani militias on 19th September 2022. She went to fetch firewood in the bush but couldn't return. The people of Mary Village also <laughs> expressed their experiences with regard to alarming rate of destruction of their farm crops on daily basis by Fulani Hesmen during grazing. On the night of 80th October 2022, at about 6 p.m., a total of four people were shot dead, two village heads and two others were killed by an armed invasion carried out by Fulani gunmen in Kulia's village, Butura district of Bukos local government area among and the attackers were seen returning back to Mahanga, Fulani dominated area of Riyom local government area. On 10th October. So, what it means is that 
the attackers are spotted, they are seen. They they mobilize from the full and each settlement within this within this local government. Yes. From there they attack and comfortably return, return back, back to, to their, their place, place, to their own settlement. Without interruption. Without interruption. And it is known that this book came from social place, come and attack, they attack, kill, kidnap, and return back to their communities. And, and the security sense. agent don't go there to go and do anything. Nothing. So it is well, it is a clear case of jihad. It is a territorial conquest well coordinated from the top to the bottom. Yes. So they are confident because what we are saying is that how can these people come from their own settlement, attack and go back and to their settlement back. and nothing happens to them? So you see that the, the, the attack is moving from one local government to another local uh -huh. government. So they attack, they mobilize, attack and return back and they are still there. Uh -huh. And no search is made, nothing is made. On 10th October 2022, at about 9.45 p.m., Fulani headers from FAS of your community, Riyom local government area, mobilized themselves with dangerous weapons and attacked residents of Dawat community for apprehending one of the Fulani that grazed into uh, more than 10 farmed crops. As a result, one person was stabbed to death while Mr. Dachomo Ishaya sustained fatal injuries on his two heads and was rushed to the hospital. In the same vein, same night, Mango community of Bokos local government area was oh, also Bokos attacked, was attacked by Fulani government. Over 20 houses were set ablaze and there was no casualties. As at the time of filling this report, there is no drastic measures taken by the government to curtail the increasing attacks in our communities. People hardly assess their farmlands, especially now that harvest time is approaching. Summary of the reports of the attacks. On the 4th of January 2022, Ancha village in Irigwe community, one person was killed in Basa local government area. On the 7th of January 2022, in Ancha, Irigwe, 20 people were killed, 7 injured, and 107 houses were razed down. On 10th January 2022, Tiana village in Tahoe's community, 3 people were killed and 2 people were injured in Riyom local government area. On 31st January 2022, in Wereng village, Bachi, in Riyom local government area, one person was killed and one person was injured. We, the list goes on and on. It's a long list of the attack in Plateau State in 2022. We are presenting this report to you today. It's the 30th day of uh, December 2022. We want you to understand that a lot had happened at the course of the year. You know, from you know September, in October, the attack moved completely to Bokos, and Bokos boiled all through October and November. It's been horrible, not just in Plateau State. The same thing happened in Benue. It's happening in Taraba, in Adamawa, in Brunoso. They are still doing what they are doing. It's happening all through in Southern, in Kaduna. It's happening in the Northwest. It's happening. It's 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 been it's been bad. It's been brutal. And we cannot afford to continue this way again. For how long? With this killing, endless killing continue. So I think a time has come for us to, to solve this problem. And uh, at the Global X update, we know that uh, the best way to solve this problem is to politically solve it. Because we need leaders who have the way, who have the capacity, who have uh, the audacity, who have... Uh, you know, the backing of God and the support of men to be able to stop this. And that is why the coming election is very, very key. Do we want these killings to stop? It started from PDP government. Then it entered, AP, APC government came in with the sole campaign promise of bringing ending insurgency in Nigeria. But under APC, it deteriorated. It became worse. So now APC have tried. PDP tried. They couldn't stop it. APC tried, they couldn't stop it. Then let's turn that party. 
And we want to we want to advise and encourage that let's give Labour Party a chance. We have tried PDP, we have tried APC, they have failed us. So we'll be we'll be we'll be great, great, the greatest fools to allow PDP back to power again after they have failed. And then the worst thing we should have said that the man who is coming over in PDP is a full and man. So you think he will stop his full and brethren from the attacks? And that is why we want the people, the, the indigenous people in the north who have been, who have witnessed this mayhem, this atrocity, should wake up from slumber. We can't afford another Fulani again to come to power. Because Buari have never condemned what had happened, what is happening. The killings has never condemned him. He has never visited any of the IDPs. But yet you have a man who is not yet a president, but yet look at him going around the IDP. On Christmas Day, celebrated in, 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 uh, in Christmas Day in Benue State, the IDP camp and in Kogi State. That is a man who we want, who cares about, about our, our, what is happening to us. So, the next election, everybody in the middle bed, every northerner. I was, I'm happy hearing that Ezezaki is supporting a P2B. That is a result to be. That is fine. If that is true, that is good. Because the houses too have suffered in the hands of the Fulanese. They are killing them in Zampara, in Sokoto, in Castina, everywhere, massacring them in air all over the north, the houses. So the houses are not safe in the north. The Margis are not safe. The Bra are not safe. Uh, they, what do they call them? The people of uh, Riom local government, uh, how do they call them again? They are not, nobody is safe. Praise the Lord. The Biroman, I'm talking, the Biroman are not safe. The one of the was affected. In, in Plateau State, the attacker are not safe. The Rebbe people are not safe. The TV people are not safe. The Doma people are not safe. The, 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 the other people in, in Taraba, the Yandem people are not safe. In Adamawa, they are not even safe also. The Bachama, Bachama people in Adamawa, they are not safe. So who is safe in the north? Only the Fulani, they are the ones safe. Go to Niger State, the Dukawa, the, the, the Bagi people are not safe. The Adara are not safe in Sanan Kaduna. Neither are the Akata people safe, nor the Boji people safe. So who is safe in the north? Only the Fulani are saving the north. So the time, even in the south, in, in, in part of your state, on your state, Okogo, Eazis, the Fulani are killing the indigenous Yoruba people. It's happening also in, 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 in Ogu states. It's happening also in Ondo state. There is nobody that is safe in Nigeria today except the Fulani that are safe. And we want to allow Fulani to come again. Go to the northeast. The, 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 the other tribes are not safe except the Kanuri people who are the who are the cousin of Islam in, in, in Kanu, uh, Kanuri people who are the only ones who are safe in the in the I mean I mean in the northeast. When you come to the other part of the north, the only people who are safe are what are the Fulanis and the Kanuris. And uh, Atiku is a Fulani man. And the APC, the APC Tunubu is sickly for what that we see about him. His deputy is a Kanuri man, he's Shetim Kashima. And the Kanuris and the Fulani are part of the people that have brought Nigeria to world, what it is today. Boko Haram is a Kanuri jihadist group. Why the other people doing bandits and other mayhems, they are the Fulani, Fulani jihadist group. So should we sell ourselves to them and become and continue this? You think that when Atu come, you stop Fulani headsmen attack? Or when uh, Tunubu becomes uh, becomes a uh, president, the two that have, that have, that have given a vow to the Fulanis that he's going to give them grazing reserve and everything that they want. Is it going to fight them? So Nigerians, let's wake up. We must put an end to this mayhem. Enough of bloodshed. And the only, the most valuable solution to this is a political solution. The Lord will help us. Let's wise up. 2023 is at the corner. As well, end 2023, let's get ready for the election. Let's vote it. Let's make sure that we do the right footing. We vote P2B who we know. That when he comes, he will not be part of this cabal, you will not be part of this bloodshed. He will stand and fight for every ordinary Nigerian to liberate Nigeria from the siege of wicked and occult men who have had the nation in bondage. The Lord bless you. We wish you happy new year in advance. The Lord bless you. Shalom, shalom from the global Christian. Don't forget, please, to share, to also subscribe to this YouTube channel and then subscribe to our Facebook uh, I mean, uh, to our Facebook uh, page. And then uh, follow us on the Facebook page. You know, then what do you do? You like this video so that, you know, when a lot of people like a video, normally YouTube and Facebook will, will now begin to, you know, push it forward. That is why you need to like it so that you can. At the, the moment you like it, then it will now be able to push forward. Or the more people can be able to. And then please forget, don't forget to share it on your social media handles. 
and the Lord will bless you richly as you do so. And uh, by the grace of God, very soon, an end shall come to this blood bloodbath in our nation. And our nation shall be free one more time. The Lord bless you. Happy New Year in advance.